Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a science enthusiast. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, and secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today in 2019, reports came out from several academic journals, including Nature and Nature Geoscience, stating that global warming had reached its fastest speeds in the past 2,000 years. Additionally, the report stated that humans are the cause of 99% of climate change. This is obviously a scary and sobering topic, so let's reverse and dive into what this report means and how climate change is affecting our world right now. Scientists and historians refer to the last two millennia as the Common Era. Climate change during that era has been the subject of heated, no pun intended, debate for several decades. Basically, scientists have been sparring about whether the recent heating records are natural and a part of how climate changes over time, or if they're human-induced and dangerous for the planet. The three articles published on July 24th, 2019, said similar things about climate change, but each had different, specific focuses. In the first article, the main specific finding was that the warming in the past two decades was the fastest in the 20th century, and in earlier centuries, it was volcanoes rather than man-made industry that had changed the climate. The second article focused on how the 20th century has its own distinct relationship to climate variance in comparison with previous centuries. Though climate change denialists like to parrot that the changes in each century are similar and therefore the changes in the 20th and 21st century have been normal, this article sought to prove that the 20th century, and likely the 21st century, are unique, and that their climate variances are due to human error rather than natural causes. The third article focuses on the mid-19th century, another era when fluctuating temperatures across calendar years were common. However, it explained that in that era of temperature fluctuation, the culprit was the residue of volcanic activity rather than the man-made climate variances of today. Together, these articles sought to prove that the climate change of today is caused by human activities and therefore can hopefully be curtailed if people are willing to make the lifestyle changes necessary to enable the climate to return to a more natural temperature, instead of the rapid heating that we have seen in the past few decades. There are many different ways to measure climate change. You can detect large-scale changes between millennia or smaller-scale changes between decades. Both are important when trying to get an entire picture of how the world's temperatures have changed or will change and why. Additionally, climate change occurs at a different pace all over the world. One area can be extremely affected one year while others are stabilized, and the next year it can be completely different. Temperature trends are not uniform because the geography of the Earth is so diverse. Oceans and continents are affected differently, elevation plays factor, forests and deserts are affected differently, and weather events further separate how an individual place will react in any given year. It's not just continents that experience these vast differences in a single year. Even individual states or parts of countries can be affected differently by global warming in any given year. This is a part of why it's so hard to understand and predict the long-term effects of global warming, and why scientific journal articles like these are so important in figuring out the long-term interpretation of seemingly small climate variances. We figure out more about climate change all the time, although that doesn't mean that scientists have figured out what, if anything, can be done about it, or what the future holds for the citizens of the Earth as the planet heats up. Scientists believe that the deaths caused by the heat waves last month in Portland were in part influenced by human-created climate change. Patients at Portland hospitals, which were even busier than during the heights of the COVID-19 pandemic, arrived with symptoms like shortness of breath, dizziness, and being drenched in sweat. Some were so overheated that they had to be carried on stretchers because their central nervous systems were shutting down. It is estimated that at least 800 people died as a result of the heat wave, but it will take a lot of research to understand how many of those deaths can be specifically attributed to climate change versus other factors in this unexpected heat wave. Portland is not the only place to be suffering from extreme climate crises right now, though. Following in the dangerous pattern of recent years, 
wildfires in the West are already raging. Hurricane season is already well underway in the Southeast, and abroad, millions of people in Madagascar are facing starvation as dust storms threaten food supplies. Tying together the past, present, and future of climate change is a vital step in the world working together toward a future where people are safe from the effects of rising temperatures. But we've got a long way to go, so it's important that everyone stay informed and engaged. Though climate change and global warming are incredibly intimidating, that's no reason to hide from learning about them. In fact, one of the most important things you can do to fight climate change is to stay informed. Scientists realize new things about how our Earth is changing every year, and those scientists and the reporters who write about their findings are the people to look for for advice on how to change your life to better prepare for a warming world. In terms of the day-to-day, though it's hard for one person to come up against the largesse of climate change, there are good habits that you can get into and share with your friends and family. One important step is to learn about carbon emissions and figure out what your carbon footprint is, and then work to lower it. If you live in a city with adequate public transit, work on getting around more by bus or train instead of always driving or set up carpools with friends. You can also contact your senators and representatives and voice your concerns about making climate a top priority in state legislation. The more people do this, the more likely it is that the government will begin taking climate change seriously. Now, let's talk about music. Today in 2020, Taylor Swift gave her fans a big surprise. The multi-genre singer usually does months long of publicity to lead up to her new albums, but during the global pandemic, she hunkered down and wrote a secret album, Folklore, and released it on July 24th, 2020, with only one day of advance notice. But the lack of prior publicity didn't stop the album from following in the footsteps of Swift's preceding six albums. Folklore went straight to number one on American charts. It also broke the Guinness World Record for biggest opening day of an album on Spotify. Swift once again collaborated with Jack Antonoff and Aaron Dessner on the album, though this time they collaborated virtually as they were recording during isolation. Today, some describe it as the quintessential lockdown album. Taylor Swift is somebody that I look to as a model for what it means to be a songwriter. Few people have done it as good as her, and I have to thank her for the road that she's paven for young female singer-songwriters like myself to make art and share it with people in the world as well. So happy birthday to Folklore and thank you, Taylor Swift. And now for today's final segment, I'll be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a July 24th in my life. On July 24th, 2020, I have to mention it, although I try to stay away from this topic, I tweeted at a Minecraft YouTuber named George Not Found, which led to an unfortunate era of the internet for three whole days in which I interacted with people that I'd never met before in a community online that I had never stepped into, and it still follows me a year later. I have people angry in my comments, people who have found my music because of that situation, or people who have found Minecraft YouTube um, who had listened to my music and then were introduced to those creators through that incident. Um, I don't talk about it a whole lot anymore because it was honestly really hard for me to deal with. I got a lot of people with unsolicited threats and comments from people telling me that I really just nasty stuff. And I think it exposed me to a lot of sides of the internet that I hopefully don't put out in my own community. I think one reason I'm really thankful for my audience and the relationship that I have is this kind of mutual respect that hopefully I can keep between um, listener and creator being myself and the people that choose to consume my content. And I feel really thankful. I mean, it was a, it was a positive and it was a negative experience to have that happen. I think I look back on it and there were a lot of things I would have changed. I don't know if I would have allowed myself to do that <laughs> a year ago if I had had the foresight to realize what would happen. Um, but it happened and I can look back on it and learn from it. And hopefully people can understand that, you know, words do have an impact. I'm a person at the end of the day and please do treat people with kindness because I got a lot of nastiness out of that and I still get a lot of nastiness out of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the internet is fun and I think people can get really into whatever the thing that they're excited about. 
but we have to take a moment to understand the impact of the things that we do. And that situation gave me a lot of understanding about my own limitations and what I hope for people to understand about me and how I hope to treat other people as well. So that's what happened. It's a far more dramatic conclusion than I thought I would draw, um, but it, it, it happened. And I figure I might as well talk about it a year after it did. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.